We absolutely, it's an honor to have your film. Um, and I think this is a, such a beautiful example of a flow in film. Like yet you've managed to do something along the lines of what Fred is doing with his amazing music. And we go from like a personal doc to, you know, to, to a music doc, to a creative process documentary, to the private, to the public. And you pull us into the moment of the music and the creative process. And then we go back into like, who is this man and, and, and what's make him the way he is. And I think uh, I want to congratulate you for it. It's fantastic. And uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about that process, the flow of like working together, the three of you, and how did you conceive the process? So whenever I hear someone describe that, my heart is like pounding because that's exactly what we wanted to do. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Um, this was a hard film to make. Uh, it was a hard story to tell, and I think um, uh, our editor, Warwick Mead, who is not here but is in New Zealand and where he lives, um, has an incredible sense of timing and musicality, and um, we would kind of just share scenes back and forth, and Charlotte would take a look, and I think it, you know, it took a while, and it, it, Eventually, it, the, the film found its voice, however. Um, we knew what scenes we wanted to be in there, and it was Charlotte who, we had, we did, I think I counted recently, we did about 20 interviews on camera for this film, and you know, initially they were kind of in there and helping us get through it, and, and Charlotte would watch a cut, and she'd say, pull it out, pull that out, take that out, take that, wait, take that out, you know, and pretty soon it just, it just kind of found its voice, and the flow, though, was always an inspiration with that kind of once we knew what we wanted to say, it was always kind of that, that we wanted you to feel like you were going somewhere, even though in reality, not that much is happening. And Fred, how is it, how is it for you to, to generate that trust, you, to be you know, so vulnerable and to allow us into your creative process? Um, I felt uh, immediately comfortable with Charlotte and Carrie. Um, uh, someday you all find out how this whole thing started, but it was, I met Carrie's husband on a, an airplane and two months later we were shooting film. It was about that simple. But Don't do that. What did I you say? <laughs> it was a little more complicated. But, but when I saw the, the first cut of the film, I thought, you know, because I was in every scene. I thought, okay, this is for sure going to be there. And, oh, why are they dwelling on that? And why wasn't that there? And, um, and now I've come to really just love this film. And I think watching yourself, you know, for that many minutes on the center of a screen, you know, thinking, oh, I'm kind of fat or, you know, or I, <laughs> I, you know, I, my hair looks crappy or, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I think Charlotte and Carrie managed to integrate so many of the threads of my life in, in a very uh, eloquent and, you know, not um, uh, overwrought manner. I think it's really, it's got a beautiful compactness to it that I think really tells a, a very elegant story. And I think these guys rock, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we can talk more, of it, but if you guys have any questions, now is the moment. Yes? Yes? I hear yes? No? Yeah, that right there. After August 2008, do you remember the time and where you were when you thought, okay, my hands are bad? Like, I'm bad. Well, uh, I went into inpatient rehab at Rivington House uh, in August of 2008, and then I came home around Labor Day. Uh, of that year, and my hands didn't really work well at all. Um, I think by January, I played a week at the Village Vanguard, and I think I was kind of back, but I, I also had another setback where I was in the ICU for a week, and two days out of that, uh, John Hebert was there, um, two days out of that, I played a gig at Smalls with the feeding tube hanging out of my stomach. I just wanted to get back in the game. I didn't want to wait for the perfect time to come back. So, it, you know, and then they came back and I think, you know, uh, I feel better about my playing now than I did before. So something, something good came out of it. Fred, do you feel like through the making of the, of the film and with them being, you know, in the process with you, that somehow that kind of like, because sometimes, you know, there's a lot of cathartic things that happen with, with filmmaking of that level and proximity. Um, did you feel that in any way 
it transformed your your own process as a creative and your own illness, you know, as you were going through with it, you know, did you feel like supported in a different way or? Um, I, I think uh, Coma Dreams, which is kind of where we started with, that was my way and Herschel's way of taking something that was inherently awful and making something artistic out of it. And, um, I think uh, th this film takes some pretty awful things and makes something ar artistic out of them. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's, that's what we all do as artists. We find things, we use what we find, and then we create something with it. And they had all this amazing footage, and this was their story of, um, I'm not being very articulate at the moment, but um, yeah, I, I, I think, uh, yeah, I've lost my train of thought. Well, in some ways, Fred, it's, it's not the story you would have told, right? No, I mean, of that course was not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would have much better hair. Yeah, I would have, I would have, I would have had you know, hair and makeup constantly, and, you know, but no, I wouldn't have, t I wouldn't have necessarily told the story, but. Um, you would have told it with pencil. What? You would have yeah. told it with the pencil. Yeah, I would have told it with pencil for sure. <laughs> yes. Any more questions? Yes. I'm really curious about the filmmakers, your background with music, because there's such a strong musicality, and also when you chose to, to showcase the music versus pulling back from the music. Uh, I mean, we don't have, we've, this is our first film about music, so. Um, and we, I mean, I've played a little bit as a kid, but not that much. I love music, I love jazz, uh, and I've listened to, to it a lot. I think the, the first decision we made as soon as we started filming was we need to get the best sound people. So we hired uh, Fred's sound people who literally record for his albums. We just went, that's who we want. I mean, they know, they know his music, they know where the mics need to be. So that's, I mean, that was the first decision. Just get, it's all about the music, the sound has to be there and to really come through. Um, and then, I mean, I think it was, it was a hard decision when we started making the film. You know, obviously there is a story about having AIDS, about being gay, about the coma, and that's what all the people, the funders wanted us to be the film about, you know, that's the story. And then we tried to make that story and it didn't work. And finally it was like, no, the story's about the music. I mean, that's what it's about. Yeah. Um, and once we made that decision, we had like literally a, a, a post-it that was like, it's about the music, stupid, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then every decision was like that. It's just like, you know, if you're gonna come, we don't want people talking when he's playing. We want people to listen to him play. And I mean, I think there is such a, right now, an array of music about a lot of musicians, and all you hear is people talking about their music when they're playing. It's like, I just wanna hear. And I, I think I also of the frustration of seeing these films. <laughs> We're like, you're gonna listen to him play for six minutes yeah. in the middle, yeah. because that's what it's about. We're not yes. gonna have, so that's a long answer to your question. Yeah, yeah and I, I truly thank them for that, that it's not, you know, a sound bite, sound bite, sound bite, mm -hmm. talking head mm -hmm. kind of film that you have a chance to actually get into what it is that I do mm -hmm. in collaboration with other people and by myself in private and in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. It's the whole it's the whole thing, including how controlling and annoying I can be. <laughs> <laughs> Question right here. They really applauded. They did. They did. The woods. I did not control that at all. And I was really glad that they did. So thank you. It was a, thank you for that. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes. There is my coma dreams is available as a DVD because it's a theater piece. You can get it on Amazon. You can 
you can get it anywhere. And it's a, it's a very well filmed version of it. I mean, it's not the same as being in the theater, but it's actually very well done and you definitely will, will get it. That's and great. it's also a fundraiser for uh, Scott's uh, uh, Global Health uh, Nonprofit Treatment Action Group. So if you, uh, if you buy one, you'll be uh, supporting a good cause. Uh, treatment it's action. treatment action yeah. group. Yeah. There yeah. was a question around here. I got to thank Scott yeah. back there. Yes. Yeah. Let's yeah. thank Scott. Where are you? Stand up, Scott. Stand, Take up. A stand up, Scott. Stand up. Come on. Come on. Stand up. Come on. Yeah. Stand up. <laughs> you were right. He deserved the standing ovation that yeah. night. Yeah. And, yes. you know, he did. He went to Coma Dreams not knowing that he was going to be like, a, a character on stage, you know, he was, he was uh, a little surprised at that. <laughs> Question? Yes. I think it it's kind of showed the the world the way that I healed. That would be my answer. I think, you know, it's, you know, um, I'm in the middle of I'm I've finished writing a memoir that's been you know very healing in a different way, um, but this kind of they gave a great window onto how I used what I do to to move forward after something this awful, you know. So yes, I mean. Yeah, in a, in a way, yes. Fred, when is the memoir coming out? The memoir is called Good Things Happen Slowly. It'll be out from the Crown Division of Random House on September 12th, 2017. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, what's, your, what's your plans for the film? Like after, what are you? So, so we have screenings. Um, we've been lucky enough to, to be able to set up screenings where Fred is also playing. Um, so Wonderful. at festivals and at um, art houses. And I think uh, we'll do that as long as we can. There's because a lot of interest. I'm getting emails every day like, oh, we want you to play and show the film. And Fred right. plays all over the world. And so I think, I mean, to me, frankly, and, and I'll let Charlotte you know, speak for herself, it's like, this is the best way to see it, is with yeah. a group of people. I mean, eventually it will stream and all of those things and a broadcast would be fantastic. But honestly, this is the way to see it. it it's together in a room in all our humanity yeah. um, and as often as Fred can be there to talk about his own experience um, to me that's the holy grail so we'll be doing that probably for the next year also because like the generosity of allowing me to know this much or this little of you and then hear you playing and see you playing and it's just such a such a gift so thank you all so much for making this wonderful piece of work and thank you all thank for coming you.